no fair anymore. <laughs> Question. Why does nobody zoom? There is a lot of focus put on where to move the camera these days when setting up a scene. Do you put it here or there? What kind of lens do you want? Will there be any movement? Because ultimately, what every cinematographer wants to know is what kind of shot do you want? But what about movement not of the camera, but of the lens? What about the strangest of choices and the seemingly only word you rarely ever dare to mention when it comes to explaining what you want from a shot? A zoom. As silly as it sounds and as basic as the action is, the use of a zoom is something so rarely seen when it comes to both movies and television shows. I've been in film courses and cinematography lessons where the teacher, who after explaining almost all of the features of the camera and what kind of shots we should go for, says that the use of a zoom is almost never ever done or needed, which might be why we don't see it that often today. But why? What is it about the zoom that makes it so controversial or maybe even so off-putting for both directors and cinematographers alike? The first possible answer suggested by most is that by using the zoom, you lose quality. But this only occurs if we're talking about a digital zoom, where you crop the image digitally afterwards in post-production. When I say the word zoom here, I'm talking about the use of an optical zoom, which is done in the camera by changing the lens focal length. Now, when you zoom into a certain area of the image, you're foregoing the focus of the surroundings that were perfectly set up in the original shot and then going closer onto an area of the image that you actually want to emphasize. If done correctly, this doesn't mean the quality of the shot has actually changed. If you're recording at 4K or 1080p, you're still recording at 4K or 1080p. The amount of data that the image being captured hasn't changed, even though you've changed the area of interest for the shot. Okay, but if you've changed the area of interest, have you actually changed the actual focus of what you want to see in terms of the depth of field. Maybe. Obviously, if you don't adjust or compensate for the now difference in focus area of the shot, then it's likely that what you're about to see can become blurred or out of your depth of field. But if you use or have a lens that already works on a wider format, then chances are this won't be a problem. You're still going to have everything in focus, but it will just be of a different subject. Okay, well, what about the lighting or the difference in lens change? Unless the subject actually changes lighting, then that's really not a fault of the camera, but rather the external condition. And if the subject is already lit up in the first place, then that shouldn't make a difference. Finally, if you're not really changing the lens, then again, that doesn't make a difference because ultimately you're just increasing the magnification of it. So what does the zoom actually do? Well, exactly that. It changes the amount of light entering into it by magnifying a certain area of the subject light being presented. The effect is quite literally acting like a magnifying glass, increasing our visual perception to a certain certain area of light on the subject. If anything, it can almost be argued that it enhances the quality of the image by giving us more detail on particular subjects area as it draws attention to something we previously couldn't or weren't able to see. To my loved one, and while they were dancing, my friend stole my sweetheart from me. But why does it feel like the zoom isn't a popular tool to use then? Maybe it has something to do with the way it feels off-putting from a lack of control point of view. In terms of cinematography, most directors of photography love to have control over what they're seeing. From the ISO to shutter speed to the focal point to the lens choice and all the way down to the camera, almost every cinematographer loves having control over what they can see and record in the camera. And this is of course for good reason. The best cinematographers know what they want and they importantly know how to control everything in their power to achieve exactly that. Zooming can feel less controlled because it changes the composition dynamically within a single shot, rather than setting up a new shot with more precision. When you use a zoom, all of a sudden, almost all of that control feels completely missing. By choosing to go from one very set piece and coordinated point of control, you risk losing all that you have built and designed by zooming in on an area that all of a sudden is different to what you had expected and might be something you're not sure would look good on camera. It also just feels weird going from one type of frame piece to another in that same continuous take because it just looks kind of strange. It looks like you are purposely making a mistake or that you're recording something from a handheld home footage type of camera. At the end of the day, it doesn't look professional. Oh, shit! oh my god! 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 
<laughs> Most cinematographers would argue if you do want to go close, why not just create a whole other setup to get exactly that? They would much prefer to have an extreme close up to achieve that exact thing in a more controlled environment. But what if you didn't have the time? Or moreover, what if you didn't want that type of shot, but you preferred a slower or faster pull in? Can you make it look professional? And if so, what can a zoom type of shot tell us about a scene? The first thing to know about a zoom is that because of how rarely it's used, it often stands out compared to every other shot. This can actually be a great thing because its difference and uniqueness is so visually eye appealing that it can give you a moment or a scene that has an extra bit of style and flair you'd rarely get otherwise. Take the film Django Unchained with its use of the crash zoom. Here these moments are incredibly quick. They are a fast piece of lens movement that you'll see and in Django Unchained they're used to a very purposeful effect. Only in moments of critical junctions or something extraordinarily powerful to the narrative are these crash zooms then employed, like showcasing a curious reaction that will turn the story on its head or an emotional outburst at a key point of what will become a violent climax. By choosing to do a crash zoom here, it highlights a very important part of the story to the viewer and it does so in a tremendously efficient action. We instantly go from a wider type of view, which is the norm, and crash into a close up that is pivotal to changing everything that we've known so far. How fast everything happens in the zoom is a reflection of how fast everything has changed in the story. And if you chose to shoot this in two ways, one shot being a wide and then cutting to next being a close up, you lose that type of speed. The next reason you might consider using a zoom is for comedic effect. When you use a zoom here, especially one that is a bit slower than a crash zoom, you can emphasize a sense of awkwardness in the comedy. Hey, your daddy! How's it going, brother? Pop the trunk and roll the windows down, please. In moments like this, I especially love zooming in on a face because it highlights the awkwardness of the situation and it makes whatever the character's reaction is going to be so much so hilarious to watch because everything is amplified. You're so pathetic. How long did this take you? Three hours? Five minutes, actually. I am a black belt in gift wrapping. Yeah, no such thing. They don't give out black belts for things that are stupid. Well, I hope it was worth it, because I'm going to take it apart in about five minutes. I think it'll take you a little bit longer than that. Really? If I can skin a mule deer in less than ten minutes, I ought to be able to cut my... It also keeps things flowing continuously. Using a zoom, especially for stories that aim to be a mockumentary, helps to not break the action or dialogue of different scenes. Instead of cutting to get to a reaction you need from a character at a certain point of time, you can just zoom in quickly on them and then pull back to return to what's happening. By doing this, you help the viewer stay within the scene and you're doing your best to not interrupt their suspension of disbelief. This makes everything feel more real and the mockumentary format is a great form to use the zoom because it already feels like it should come across as a documentary, just like it would be for a handheld home footage video. Today, smoking is going to save lives. smell anything smoky? Did you bring your jerky in again? One of the more underrated uses of a zoom is with the extremely slow zoom that you might often see with a really wide landscape shot and then draws you into something that will be the main subject. I think this particularly works well when it comes to slow burn type of films or those with a sense of drama and action that require a rising sense of tension. Thank you. 
using a zoom here helps facilitate all of this because it feels like you're slowly being lulled into the drama of the story. It also has a great way of evoking that voyeuristic type of feeling, which is often why spy movies are the best at this, because the zoom in inherently feels like it's mimicking someone watching from afar. And finally, I would be completely negligent to forget talking about my favorite type of shot in all of cinema history, the spectacular Dolly Zoom. A shot that was made so famous in Jaws, but that has continued on to be a go-to shot when it comes to creating a sudden disturbed feeling for the visuals to match that same sudden change in a character or narrative plot point. This is such a majestic type of shot that in my view perfectly combines the use of movement of both the camera and of the lens in such a way that creates one of the most uniquely interesting visual depth of fields for the subject and background that can't be matched anywhere else in real time. As one of the most important fossil bearing sites in all the world. For here you can see fossils of the very first animals that evolved on this planet. Post-production effects can alter the background even more so, but when it comes to getting it down on the real day with such naturalistic skewed imagery, you can't get anything better than the dolly zoom. So the next time you watch something and see a zoom on the screen, take a second to appreciate its beauty because chances are you're watching a shot that was argued over from a cinematography standpoint and that like an endangered animal is a type of camera technique that you won't see too often. This is about your cooking. Hey, that's Gusto. I mean, look. Great cooking is not for the faint of heart. You must be imaginative, strong hearted. You must try things that may not work. And you must not let anyone define your limits because of where you come from. Your only limit is your soul. What I say is true. Anyone can cook, but only the fearless can be great. Pure 